All right, welcome in. Episode 46 of Are You Serious? What's going on? Jamie is back. Yeah, back. Back in town after a uh, whirlwind trip across the beautiful state of Texas. Yeah, deeper in the heart of Texas. Oh, yeah, I was deep in the heart of Texas. Deep. <laughs> really deep. Uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, welcome into Are You Serious? If this is your first time, we appreciate you uh, tuning in this this evening. I almost said this yeah. morning. <laughs> Well, my TV yeah. magic. Um, but yeah, I am uh, meteorologist Andrew Dockery, Chief Meteorologist Jamie Arnold. We're located in Myrtle Beach. And before we get started, rate, like, share. Subscribe. Subscribe. That's usually the only one I can remember to say is <laughs> subscribe. <laughs> uh, we're here, though. Uh, how mm -hmm. was the trip? It was an amazing trip. Um, I'm ready for a vacation. It wasn't exactly a lounge <laughs> by the pool and relax kind of trip. It was seven days in Texas, all over Texas. And uh, every single day was jam-packed. And moving and shaking. Yeah. And first half of the trip was the National Tropical Weather Conference. Second half of the trip, of course, was the eclipse. Mm. Uh, there was a little gap in there, three days, where I was free to do what I wanted to do uh, in Texas. And I did. Explored all over Austin and outside of Austin and had a great time. That's awesome. Have you been to Austin before? I had never been to Austin. Okay. I had been to many parts of Texas, um, but had never been to Austin. Day one was not a fan. Okay. Um. You know I'm not a big city guy. Yeah, I'm not a lot either. of I'm not yeah. a lot of people guy. Mm -hmm. Austin's a big city with a lot of people, a lot. and the it's traffic grown. moves really fast, and there's a <laughs> lot going on, and that's not my vibe. Yeah. Um. But by the end of the trip, I was like, okay, I could kind of get into this. It's yeah. a it's an easy to navigate city. Mm -hmm. I feel like the traffic patterns are kind of laid out really well, so you can sort of zoom across town. Um, which was nice considering so many people were there for the eclipse. Yeah. Traffic-wise, it actually wasn't bad. Um, I know a lot of people are mad because I didn't like get into the Austin scene. Yeah, I went downtown one night, mm. and that was enough, yeah. and I had to leave <laughs> yeah. as it got dark because it's just a lot going on down there. Yeah. A lot. And so, yeah. The food in Austin, I vividly remember still to this day, is fantastic. I did eat a lot of food. Some of the <laughs> best Tex-Mex food oh, you will ever put in your face. They do it so well. I ate a lot of food truck. And the cool thing about Austin is, like, you can literally find a food truck anywhere. On the, on like, the on side the, of the road. Literally just is. on the side of the road out in the suburbs, there's uh -huh. a food truck. So I did a lot of food trucks. Um, my favorite thing eating-wise out there was... Um, breakfast so like a breakfast taco or oh, a breakfast yeah. burrito and it's just full of fresh avocado and mm. cilantro and eggs and uh it was just amazing yeah i would say Austin honestly is probably in my top five cities it's uh, it i would like it's to close. go back and and maybe explore it some more and i would probably go back to if you go back again go back in like the fall mm -hmm. or like early winter like let the because yeah. right now i'm sure it's packed it, it is packed and uh, it was beautiful um but everybody that I talked to, they were like, you know, just, you know, either sitting at a bar or waiting on something mm -hmm. or like, oh, so how do you like Austin? Like, it's really great. And they're like, just wait two months when it's miserable. Yeah. Um, everybody there just, they're worn out from the heat last year. Like, every summer is hot, but I don't know if you remember, <laughs> you but, Texas, but Texas had just a historically hot summer. Mm. And I think, I think Austin went over a month and a half yeah, with remember. temperatures every single day over 100. And oh. yeah. Awful. Yeah. They were literally burnt out from that. Mm. So, yeah, so I was there at a good time. Weather was beautiful. Yeah, that's fantastic. Nice. Uh, you didn't miss anything here. I noticed. Everything was kind of calm. I was kind of keeping up. Kind of calm. Things look quiet. Yeah, quiet. We had maybe one system rolled through, I think, mm -hmm. when you left. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, that's been it. We had people in the chat. I was in the chat. Uh, let me tell you, episode 45 was yeah. quiet crickets really like there was a lot of people watching yeah. the chat was just so i can't remember what i was doing that night i think you were about to fly out maybe or yeah you were I already I there yeah i can't remember i think maybe i was probably sitting at dinner um, having a drink but yeah <laughs> we have plenty of questions we'll get to those if we have time i know we have a lot i kind of want to do this in reverse because next episode we're going to focus on where do we go from here when yeah. it comes to the tropical weather conference yep because you're going to share all that knowledge so let's go backwards on your trip yeah and plus, this is what people want to hear. Yeah. The Jamie story. Yeah. Uh, the total solar eclipse. How nervous were you leading up to it? And when did you start to think, okay, I think we're going to be okay with cloud cover? Um, very <laughs> nervous leading up to it because the forecast, even a week out, were already oh. showing clouds in Texas. And then two to three days out, it was looking like it was going to be solid 
thick overcast. Mm -hmm. Um, I looked into changing my location. I was thinking maybe Ohio. I was thinking maybe the Northeast. But by the time I changed flights and then had to pay a cancellation fee for Airbnb, it was going to cost more than the whole trip combined. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to have to make the most of it. And the fact that the severe thunderstorm threat was kind of increasing Mm -hmm. was like, you know what? Let's make the most of the eclipse, hang out for the severe storms, and we'll see what happens. Um, So got up Monday morning, and I was in Austin, which was sort of right on the edge of totality. So I wanted to be in the center line. So for weeks, I had been sort of looking in the general area of where I wanted to be in totality, and then the Two days leading up to it, I narrowed it down literally to an intersection that looked the most remote (laughs) that I could possibly find. Your photos also showed (laughs) remote. Yeah, it was definitely remote. Um, So I got up. uh, The eclipse totality at my location was at 1.32. I was on the road at 6 a.m. It was only an hour and a half drive Mm -hmm. outside of Austin, but I got up at 6 a.m. because everybody was talking about the traffic and it's going to be insane and it's going to be ridiculous. I left Austin at 6. I got to that remote spot at 7.30 Mm. (laughs) to start waiting for (laughs) totality at 1.30. That's awesome. Which was good. So, yeah, there was no traffic. Uh, My intersection worked out perfectly. I was literally um, off a somewhat main road, um, basically at the entrance to a giant, Texas ranch, uh, which, you know, there's nothing but ranches out there um, in the Texas Hill Country. And it was beautiful. The wildflowers were still in bloom. Uh, As the sun came up, you could occasionally hear a rattlesnake off in the distance. I was like, yeah, I'm out here. I'm out here. Oh. Yeah. I started to figure out, I was like, okay, if he's, I figured you were going into the middle. Mm -hmm. And then I saw your um, image. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I think I know where he is. <laughs> yeah. So I started to watch satellite. Mm-hmm. And I was like, in the morning, I was like, oh, I think he's going to be okay. But then you start to have a little bit of a cumulus field. Yeah. Like oh, probably an hour before. Yeah. Well, it, that talent. morning, that morning, it was a solid overcast. Yeah. It was <laughs> thick. There was fog. But as the sun came up, it sort of burned off and clouds began to break. And there were still some high clouds overhead. Um, but it almost made totality even better okay just the way the clouds were illuminated yeah. and it just added an extra sort of depth to the sky so it, I, I was happy with it that's awesome yeah how long was totality where totality you where i was was a full four minutes and 30 seconds oh my God. which is very long for totality um if you were around here in 2017 obviously there wasn't totality here closest you could get to totality was georgetown and there it was a minute and 30 seconds yeah um, I think the peak totality in South Carolina in 2017 was maybe two minutes, 15 seconds. So to have four and a half minutes of totality is a really long time. And it was just incredible. I cried for the second time during my oh, total solar my eclipse all by myself. Just like a little tear running down my face because you don't want it to end. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just. Oh. That's awesome. That's awesome. It's. um, And it's still. The thing that amazes me are the moments leading up to totality and right after totality. So the the shadow um, was approaching from the southwest. Mm -hmm. So I had a great southwest view. And it's not a gradual darkening process. Like it gets dim in maybe the 10 minutes leading up to it. Everything starts to take on a almost like a black and white appearance. Like colors get much less vibrant. Um, everything almost gets dull and it's like your Mm -hmm. brain can't quite process what's going on. It's like, okay, I know there's something different with the light, but it's not like a sunset. It's it's a totally different feel. Um, But then in the five minutes leading up to totality, you could look off to the Southwest sky and the clouds broke enough that you can see the shadow. It's the, the Southwest horizon is dark and it gets darker and it gets darker and it gets wider. It takes up more of the horizon, and then it's just, and it's dark. That's awesome. And it's dark. Um, And then as it ends, uh, looking to the southwest, you can see it getting lighter. Mm -hmm. Um, 
and then you looked off to the northeast, and it was getting darker as totality was That's racing awesome. across. It took 18 minutes for the shadow to go all the way across Texas. From the Think Texas Mexico fast that is from moving. the Texas Mexico border. That's where it started um, until it moved into Arkansas. It took 18 minutes. That shadow was moving at a thousand miles per hour. Hmm. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, stars came out. Uh, I mentioned I was surrounded by ranches, and all morning long you could hear tractors in the distance, and you could hear the cows and crickets and birds, and things were just going along. Um, but then about five minutes before totality, everything just got quiet. Just okay. completely. The, the cows stopped, the birds stopped, the crickets stopped, the tractors stopped. And then the second it got dark, I was by myself where I was, very remote, but I was up on the main road, I think there were a lot of people that had parked there. And then on further down the road from where I was, there was actually a little campground that there were a lot of people. So as totality hit and the darkness came over us, off in the distance, you could very faintly hear people yelling and screaming and clapping. And it was just incredible. And then for four and a half minutes, it was just just dead silent. Mm. Just dead silent. Temperature dropped. The breeze stopped. Yeah. I would say for us here, 70 percent is about the time where you can start to notice a little mm -hmm. bit of a dim so yeah. it was really cool like you can still see you knew something was off yeah uh, here locally we dropped two to four degrees yeah but that helps because we were full i mean you would have loved a clear sky yeah, that right. we had yeah we didn't have a cloud out there yeah um and of course i told you i was at 98 percent in 2017 yeah and i still regret not going further west but after being at 98 percent, 70 percent, so yeah. i walked around the neighborhood yeah during it and seeing these kids mm -hmm. first time ever yeah, yeah. like whoa <laughs> right it's and amazing it's 70 percent yeah. and they're losing their mind yeah and i was like you know this is kind of cool to think like from out west to the east everyone was talking yeah. about the solar oh, yeah. eclipse yeah think about that yeah like that's that's i think also the power of it it is it is and then uh, magnify that times a hundred yeah in texas and yeah. austin like everyone was talking about the eclipse Everywhere you went, where are you going for the eclipse? What are you doing? Eclipse parties. All the all the restaurants were having eclipse awesome. specials, That's and awesome. it's just it, it, the it was it consumed everything. That's awesome, and it was it was amazing. Uh, one of the coolest things uh, from totality, and I didn't really figure. I kind of knew what this was, but I didn't really notice it until I got home Tuesday and was just kind of going through all the pictures and everything during totality. Uh, there was a persistent, really, really bright spot on the southeast corner. Mm -hmm. So you have, you know, you have the the moon completely covering the sun. You can see the corona, which is the sun's atmosphere. But all through totality, on the southeast side, was this really, really bright spot, insanely bright spot, and it was there through the entire eclipse of totality. Um, it was one of the giant solar flares. I saw that. Uh, which was incredible. And to, to be able to see it with the naked eye was insane. Yeah. Uh, but then to get see some of the really close-up pictures of it uh, was pretty incredible. Yeah, NASA released some photos of oh, it. Oh, just it's unbelievable. Un yeah, That's kind of crazy to think yeah. that that's, yeah. that's our atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would also like to take back that I would not like to be on a plane during the total solar eclipse. I because saw some of those planes. I was like, yeah, that's pretty good. I saw some of that video. I was like, I yeah. I said, dang, I'll take everything back that I said. Yeah. Yeah. That, no. yeah. Those, those were, those were some amazing photos and videos, but I'm ready for the next. 2044? 45? Uh, yeah. 44, 20, I think, is up in like Canada. Mm -hmm. I think 45. 45 is the, is the one that kind of goes just south of us. Yeah. Um, that's another August eclipse, I think. Mm -hmm. It's my birthday. Really? I think it's August 25th or well, August you need 24th. To, I'll probably be dead, but you need yeah, to treat well, yourself. Here we go. You need to treat here yourself. We go. You need to treat yourself. Um, I'm looking ahead to 2028 in Australia. I think that's going to be my next one. Well, that would be fun. Yeah. yeah. How far of a flight is that? I don't know. I'd have to break it up. <laughs> I can't. Into a, I can't. Yeah. Two, three hours. Oh, is, yeah. It the was, West Coast is enough for me. It was two hours and 45 minutes coming back from Austin, and that's kind of my limit. So I'll have to leapfrog my way to Australia, like with a day in between. Six flights. <laughs> right. To get there, but he's going to get <laughs> yeah. there. Um, all right. So you went there, and then after the solar eclipse, um, two for one. Two for one. What, what a, a day. What a day. <laughs> so literally, as the eclipse ended, there was a forecast for severe weather. 
the eclipse was ending, and as it was ending, the storms were starting to fire up. What a goal. So I pulled out of my little chase spot, hit the road, ended up going through Colleen and Waco, and then ended up northeast of Austin somewhere. Um, Sounds like a country song. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, went through Temple. Oh. Uh, yeah, Temple, Texas. Yeah. Which um, I kept, as I was going through Temple, I kept thinking the George Strait song. Yeah. yeah um, <laughs> Temple Zoo now lives in Temple. I was like, yeah. <laughs> Most of his catalog comes from that great state. <laughs> right, yeah, no doubt. Um, so, yeah, um, you know, I didn't get in any really severe storms. Um but just to be back out there with the flatness and the no trees, mm -hmm. you know, I did it a couple times, real storm chasing in college when I was in grad school. And just to be back out there again, wide open spaces and just storms on the distance. There's something about being out in the plains, too. And if you've never been, if you're a weather enthusiast, the structure just yeah. of a typical thunderstorm exactly. out there. Exactly, exactly, which is why I was out chasing is because around here we have so much low-level moisture Correct. and clouds, you can rarely see sort of the entire thunderstorm uh -huh. by itself. Every once in a while we'll get lucky, but out there that's, that's common, and that's why it's such a popular place for chasing. The other great thing is all the roads are grids. Mm -hmm. uh, when you chase around here, you have roads that do this and this. And, and you're this, just trying to find a good view. You're trying to find a good view because you're down in the trees and you're in the swamp out there. You got nothing. So yeah. if you're like, all right, I need to go east, you can find an east road, yeah. and it's going to be a little farm road, and the speed limit's going to be 80 miles per hour. That's amazing. <laughs> because that's how all the roads are in Texas, because they're straight, and they're flat, and there's nobody else. So to be able to book along at 80 miles per hour and make turns where you need to make turns, it was it was amazing, and I had the best time. That's awesome. Um, yeah, chased. So the eclipse totality ended at 135. 145 I was on the road and I chased and I finally got back to my little Airbnb I guess it was about 8 30 9 o'clock yeah it was amazing that's a good day it was a really there good really day. weren't two and I was looking I even checked like 10 30 woke up because Brooks was sick that mm -hmm. night um there really weren't that many warnings either on that day. They yeah. were all situated up near Dallas. Up so near Dallas. So you probably couldn't even got right. to. Right and, and had I not had an early morning flight to come home Tuesday I would have gone up towards Dallas or back, even all the way back towards like Abilene. Yeah. Um, Cause that's where the real stuff mm -hmm. was happening that night. But uh, having to be at the airport at 6am, yeah, I was like, it. no, I can't, I can't do that. Then of course, just my luck. Um, I flew home Tuesday morning and Tuesday afternoon, there were super cell thunderstorms all around Austin and dropping baseball size hail and all the great stuff and beautiful structure. <sighs> That sounds like a great trip. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wish I could have stayed one more day to catch catch in on that. But I think now, I think I got to start chasing again. I Out there. would love to do a chase trip, but yeah. man, it's a lot. It's a lot because it it, it it doesn't feel like a vacation. It doesn't. <laughs> and you want to talk about a gamble? Mm -hmm. You know, to to sort of get at least a couple of chances for storms, mm -hmm. especially April and May. You got to book a good two weeks to be out mm -hmm. there, and it's a crapshoot. And you have to be willing to drive. And you got to be willing to drive a lot a because lot. your threat one day may be around Austin, Texas, and then the next day it's in like North Platte, Nebraska. Yeah. And and you got to do the drives. Mm hmm And even on chase days, there's a lot of just sitting. Yeah, hundred percent. And waiting. You know, you kind of figure out, okay, <laughs> this is the area I want to be in. Yeah. So, one, you got to hope that forecast is right, that you mm -hmm. pick the right spot. You get there, and a lot of times those storms aren't going off till 4, 5, 6 o'clock in the afternoon, and you're just sitting in the middle of a field mm -hmm. in the middle of nowhere, yeah. waiting. Hoping everything you looked at the yeah. whole day yeah. pans out. Yeah. It is nerve-wracking. It really is. It is. Um, that mesoanalysis page we talked about last episode yeah. is like – the, yeah. The oh yeah. King I was I was on that. it all day long Monday. Yeah. It's like all right, where are we yep. going to be? Yep. Where are we going next? Um, but yeah, I think I want to do it again. It just felt so fun. good to be out there. Just I feel like I can breathe when I'm in big open spaces like that. Mm -hmm. It just I don't know. It does something to my soul. Yeah, it's beautiful out there yeah. too. I mean, if you can deal with the heat, it's it's in the bugs and the occasional rattlesnakes yeah. and 
hope you don't have any car trouble because if you have a car trouble somewhere out in the middle of <laughs> nowhere, it might Texas, take a day to come it's going to take a day and a half for tow truck Bob to come fix, to come get you because oh. it is insanely remote. And one thing I did learn, and the one thing that I remembered was, if you see a gas station, get gas. Yeah. Get gas. Yeah. Because it may be a long time before you have to stop and get gas. Well. Uh, Solar eclipse, solar chase, solar chase, <laughs> severe storm chase. Um, you went to Texas, though, for what I'm sure everyone is curious about, and that was the National Tropical Weather Conference. Yeah, that was the first half of my trip, um, and it's just the best conference. It is the best conference. It's small. Mm-hmm. Which is unheard of, too, in the weather field. Right. Like, see, the American Meteorological Society Conference or whatever, there'll be hundreds and hundreds, hundreds. and hundreds of people that show up. And uh, the one, the National Tropical Weather Conference, it's all hurricane geeks. Yeah. Um, and it's usually less than 100 people there. So you That's really awesome. get a good chance to network and you get a good chance to know people. Um it's in South Padre Island, so yeah. it's it's very laid back. You know, you're not putting on a suit every day to sit Which in a conference nice. room. You can go in your shorts and your flip flops. Mm-hmm. Every night they have a little party reception right on the Gulf of Mexico, mm-hmm. and you know, f- hang out with your fellow weather geeks and throw back a couple margaritas and talk hurricanes. That's and it's awesome. also a cool conference because um, it's a really great mix. So you have like hurricane chasers. Mm-hmm. You have. Uh, the deputy director of the National Hurricane Center, which is neat, to be able to talk to face to face while you're having a margarita is insane. Um, Doctor Phil, yeah, uh, Klotzbach, um, he's there. Have to he's, clarify, yeah, he's <laughs> he's hanging out. You have media people, yeah, um, and we're all there for one reason: it's because we're, you know, in the hurricane business and emergency preparedness. People were there. It's just a great mix of people and. Such a great opportunity to network and to learn and to just engulf yourself in hurricanes. Yeah, for, for sure. For days. I got to ask because we'll kind of focus on what the conference yeah. covered for next episode. I really want to do a deep dive, kind of like a, our Cone episode yeah. from season one. Yeah. Um, I mean, we have to ask it. Someone's already told me to ask it, so mm-hmm. we're going to. Who are your favorite people to hang out with? At, I, mean, uh... I think everybody knows. <laughs> I think everybody knows, especially you guys. We were having. I'll read your face. Just got... uh, Josh, Josh Morgerman, yeah. um, who, by the way, has agreed to be on a certain podcast called Are You Serious? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we got to so, yeah, figure that out. Hanging out with Josh is just, if you're not familiar with Josh, you can look him up. Get, prepare like three hours to look him up. Uh, yeah, because yeah. you're going to go down a rabbit hole. Josh Morgerman, um, he's on Facebook and Twitter. I Cyclone, I letter I Cyclone, um, just an insane hurricane chaser all over the world. And I will be the first to admit, I will. I have fangirled over Josh for a long time, and we've actually become friends. And so getting to see him was great. Yeah, um, hearing some of his stories was fantastic um the graphic of all his chases uh, 70 seven he's, uh, i'm not going to give all of it away because we'll we save that to, yeah. we'll save that for when he's when he's on the podcast oh. but his stories are amazing and his his videos are amazing um he's been in five category five hurricanes and when we say in them in them in them the eye wall the eye wall the eye the most intense part of the most intense p- storms on the planet he's been right there and he's doing it too for a good cause. Yeah. Research. Yeah. Understanding this. Yeah. How does this affect forecasting? Mm-hmm. What do we learn about these storms? So, like, yes, he still enjoys it, mm-hmm. but he's also doing it for a great purpose yeah. too, which I love. Yeah. So it was great to hang out with him. Uh, one of the other per- uh, people I hang- hung out with a bit um, was Mark Suddeth. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're familiar with HurricaneTrack.com, um, I met Mark Suddeth when I was in college. Um, someone put me in contact with him. He lived in Wilmington at the time. Um, he was just kind of starting his hurricane chasing sort of career. We met up, started talking, and he was like, yeah, you should come with me uh, on my hurricane chase. I'm going to age myself here. Um, I was in grad school uh, in 1998, and we chased Hurricane Bonnie mm. together, which came right up by Myrtle Beach, made landfall uh, near Wilmington. Um, and then we chased, in 1999, we chased Hurricane Floyd together. Um, 
right on Wrightsville Beach as Floyd was making landfall on the beach in the eye. Stars are out. Insane. So I hadn't seen Mark in years and years. So it was great to kind of catch up with him. That's awesome. Yeah. So we caught up and shared a bunch of old stories. Those are my two favorites from yeah. the trip, for sure. That's for awesome. sure. That's awesome. Was there anything – I was going to say surprising or anything that maybe stood out on things to come for the new year. Things this, that maybe you didn't expect. This conference was a little bit different than 2022. The 2022 conference, 2023 conference, sorry. Time's flying. Yeah, out. right. <laughs> uh, was on the heels after Hurricane Ian mm -hmm. and the devastation and the big issues in Florida. So there was a big focus on that and a big focus on how do we change that. With the last season being relatively quiet outside of Adalia, um, it wasn't quite as heavy on that, but there was a lot of new research that's coming out. Um, and we'll get into this in the next episode. One of my favorite presentations of the entire conference uh, was titled The Great Exhale. And um, a research scientist at the National Hurricane Center has been studying how hurricanes, I'm not going to give it away because it's the next episode, literally late at night, early in the morning. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. And your mind is going to be blown. <laughs> Time out. We'll stop right there. Your mind is going to be blown. Okay, cool. Um, a, incredible research okay. on that. Well, that's coming next episode. Yeah. Um, changes coming to the cone uh, that start this year. Okay. Um, where if you go to the National Hurricane Center website, um, if the forecast track, if the cone is going over a land area, you will not only see the cone, but you will see all of the watches and warnings associated with that. I love that. Um, to sort of get across the point that, you know, your cone may be intersecting a small portion of the coast, but you can have storm surge and wind and flooding way outside that cone, yeah. and that's kind of the whole issue uh, ever since Hurricane Ian really brought that to the forefront. So that's going to start this year. A lot of good new storm chasing, uh, storm surge research going on um, to try to get all of that better communicated to the public because that's one of the hardest things. It is hard to communicate to the public is storm surge. It is hard, and and I think too <coughs> another thing that can be hard and difficult to communicate, and we could touch on this before we do shooting the breeze, the tropical outlook, hurricane mm -hmm. outlook. Yeah. Every time it comes out, like people think, oh, it's all hype, but there's a lot of science. What was it like being in the room because you, you kind of we knew where this was going. Yeah, we didn't like know the numbers. on the wall. Yeah, but we yeah everything points to an insanely busy hurricane. But season. when the numbers come out, I even was like. Okay, like I'd expected high, but right. I didn't know about that high. And it could yeah. have been higher. It could have been higher, and that's one of the cool things. Uh, Dr. Phil, when he sort of said those numbers, um, inside scoop, I knew the numbers before the numbers came out. Wow. Which was kind of cool. Like, I felt really <laughs> special. I wasn't the only one, yeah. but the night before he did his big release, we were all just kind of talking to him. And he's like, here's the numbers, don't say anything. Um, so to hear those numbers was was impressive. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, the day that he did his release, he went through all the science behind it. Um, much higher confidence than last year's hurricane uh -huh. outlook because of the competing factors we had last year. This year, it's warm water in La Nina. And busy season, two big check marks. Yeah. Um, and that was his busiest, most active forecast he's ever done. Okay. This is horrible of me. 23 name storms? 23 name storms. Yeah. 11 hurricanes, five 11 majors. hurricanes, yeah. Yeah. Which he's never went above nine hurricanes, and he's never mm -hmm. went above 19 named storms. Yeah. So, I mean. Yeah. This is his yeah busiest outlook ever. So, yeah. again, as we always have to say, though, that doesn't guarantee that we're going to get a hit here. Correct. But, naturally, the more storms, the better your odds. Yeah. Better you chances. Know, the better chances yeah. that you're going to have an impact. Mm. Um, and that was also reflected in his outlook, uh, some pretty decent odds for the Carolinas I feel like even this year just listening to Phil going back and listening to it even the way like if you if you really wanted to go into it last year's outlook and then this year's go back and listen and mm -hmm. you can just tell yeah. there is a confidence there in is. this year yeah like there was a lot of uncertainty it was like well we're thinking this but yeah there wasn't no buts this right. time like it, it was very 
hey, this is what is going to happen. Yeah. This is how we feel. And honestly, yeah. I, I remember him saying at one point, we may have to bump it up if trends continue. The When he was given the numbers the night before, he said, he said, um, I don't think I'm high enough. That's crazy. <laughs> right. That's crazy. <laughs> I don't think I'm high enough. At 23 name storms, and he's already thinking, may bump this up. Yeah, and we'll have another Outlook update coming in, I think, June. Yeah, um, so for that him, and then out. Noah's Outlook comes in May, out in May. So. Um, and, and it's probably going to be really close. Yeah. Really close. And Noah does a range, too, so yeah. you'll get a couple numbers. Yeah. They might go 18 to 21. It's yeah. going to be a range. Right. Um, so, yeah, much more on the Tropical Weather Conference coming next episode. Yep. I think we shoot the breeze um, because we got a lot. Of, Whoa, look at that. How about that? Man, we drank right? this thing the last time <laughs> we were here. I was a little worried. I do see one name already off the top. <laughs> Mark. Mark. Oh, Mark. Um, Mark messaged me because every time I see his name in here, I say, oh, Mark. Oh, Mark. <sighs> I, I will say <laughs> I type a lot of these out, obviously. But then I forget, I just typed all these out right before the recording. So I don't think there's anything too hard this time. There's a couple times where I'm like, oh, like, how are we going to answer this? Yeah. I think we got these. These are pretty. We're comfortable enough. They know now if it's too hard, we'll just put it back in the box. Either that or I'll just look it up on my phone. <laughs> yeah, We've done we'll that before, too. <clears throat> oh, this is really good and ties in perfectly to everything we got going on. With the upcoming hurricane season, oh, what are some that. tips you would recommend to someone new here? Um, it's really simple. Yeah. Ross, it is really simple. Be prepared. Yeah. Be prepared. Know your plan. Mm -hmm. Know your evacuation zone. Which are new this year. Which are new this year. Know if you're in an evacuation zone. You may have been in an evacuation zone last year. You're not in one this year. Or you may be in a different zone. Yep. Um, know your zone. Know your plan. Have your kit. Mm -hmm. Don't freak out. Okay. <laughs> we might need to put that in number don't one. Fr yeah, don't freak out and keep up with the forecasts. Yes, yeah, 100%. If you're one of these people who, you know, may check in on the news on Monday or check the forecast on Monday and things look pretty quiet and then you don't check again until Friday, you can't do that around here in hurricane no. season. You know, um, keep up with things because things change. And starting in hurricane season, too, we're really good about – Every day you'll see a tropical update from us, well, yeah. hey, even if it's nothing. Yeah, all's quiet in the tropics. Yep. <laughs> nothing to worry about for the next five days. And, and we'll do it. We'll do that just yeah. so you know, because I know not everyone watches yeah. every day. Right. But if you're tuned again, we will give you that starting June 1st. Honestly, I think it's going to be earlier. I think they do, what, a week or two weeks in advance now. Yeah. So yeah. coming up And there's here even in some hints, May. some hints, and even Phil said, mentioned this, that maybe even a little preseason development, Yeah. Uh, which is kind of common in these really hyperactive seasons. You may start getting stuff as early as May. So... So, yeah, Ross, be prepared. Yeah, great be question. Be prepared, though. know your plan. We've got a whole section on our website, everything you need to know, yeah. everything you need for your kit, every evacuation zone. Yeah, that Hurricane Shelter. Uh, Center is great. Yeah, it's just, all right there. Just type in WMBF Hurricane yeah. Center. You'll leave it there. Oh, let's see. Tropical Outlooks. <laughs> this is great. I love it. Uh, tropical Outlooks are great, but for you all, do they become too confusing to the public? Curious on your take, Scott. Uh, they can be. They can if the be. messaging isn't right. I yeah. do think it's good for preparation, um, but you can only prepare for so much. Like what we just answered to Ross, on a quiet season or active season, that's what you do. And it and just kind of sets the tone. It does. Life. It does. And I've gone back and forth on these hurricane outlooks. And I'll admit, in previous years, I have underplayed them mm -hmm. because I do think they can be confusing. Yeah, 100%. If to, you know, to the soccer mom with four kids who's watching yeah. and hears us go on the air and say there's going to be 23 named storms. They think there's going to be 23 hurricanes hitting the U.S. Yeah. this and, year. Yeah, correct. And that's and that's not it. We're talking about total season, total storms, the majority of which are going to stay harmlessly out in the ocean. Mm -hmm. So I've always kind of downplayed it a little bit. This year I changed my tune just because of what this season looks like. Yeah. I was like, let's hit this kind of hard. And you and I, we all kind of planned ahead knowing it was going to be a big forecast. Yeah. We said let's – Let's hit this one kind of hard because I think it's it's already in the back of your head as you're preparing mm -hmm. that this, this could be a year. And think of it, too, like how many major hurricanes do we have that just stay out and they're fish storms? Right. Exactly. You know, like, exactly. I think it's just the way I go about it is the higher the number, the better the chances of United States impacts. Yeah. And even then, that doesn't mean it's us, but no. it's going to be somebody. No. Um, there's a couple of, you know, really classic examples of 
you know, the 2005 hurricane season, which at the time was the busiest on record. That was mm-hmm. the year of Katrina and Rita and Wilma, and it was just hit after hit after hit. Carolinas, or at least here locally, we got brushed by yeah. one, nothing. Yeah. Um, but then you go to really quiet seasons like 1992. Yeah, quiet seasons. Really quiet season. The first name storm in 1992 didn't form until August. And that first name storm was Andrew. Mm-hmm. Uh, 1984. Is either 1983 or 1984. There were four name storms the entire season. One of them was a Category 4 that hit Texas. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you can get big hits in a quiet season. You can get no hits in a busy season. We can get hit any season. Yeah. Um, so... It's good. It's got good questions. Scott and Ross. All right. What causes king tides? <laughs> this could be a whole episode. We should. Poor Margaret. We keep putting off no, her questions no. to uh, king tides. Um, the moon. Yeah. Basically, a new phase of the moon. New phase of the moon. Always elevate it. Um, this is where we have to get into perigee and apogee. And mm-hmm. <laughs> I was just going to keep it simple, and then we can go into detail. I was going to say you have new phases of the moon. Mm-hmm. When the moon is the closest mm-hmm. to us, we begin to see a larger gravitational pull. Yes. Which influences our tides. So, Happens, I think it's worse in the winter and summer. Yeah, we just finished around the king tides, yeah. didn't we? We had a little bit of minor I think winter flooding. and summer are the worst. So, so you have the earth. Yep. <laughs> Let him go into the detail. <laughs> this is my, 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 my teacher time. So you have the earth. What a solar system. Um, 75% water. Mm-hmm. You got the moon out here Yep. Uh, that's rotating around the earth. The moon has a gravitational pull. Yep. Um, so as the moon is rotating around the earth, the gravitational pull actually on a global scale pulls the water towards it um everybody thinks of the earth as a perfectly round ball it's not it's kind of oblong Mm -hmm. it's almost like a squished ball shape and that is because of the moon pulling the gravity gravitational pull of the moon pulling some of that water and as the moon goes around the earth that pull of water literally follows it and that's what gives you your tides if the moon's a little bit closer, king tides, yeah. it's more of a pull. Which happens, like we said, every 30 days or so. As it's f- further away, you get leap tides, which are the opposite. That's the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That makes sense? Yeah. I mean. Margaret? Yeah. Hope it did you good. <laughs> Poor Margaret. <laughs> We're sorry. We don't mean to keep. Margaret's, Margaret stumps us, and we like it. Mm-hmm. Margaret's turning into a mark. Yep. Yeah, side. right. Yeah. <laughs> They're talking to each other. How can we stump them now? <laughs> Let's pull out the textbook here. Um, Rob, what's the furthest you feel comfortable giving a forecast? <laughs> two days. <laughs> Depends sometimes, on the season. <laughs> sometimes around here, two hours. <laughs> In the summer, like 48 hours. Yeah. <sighs> Winter, fall, a week. Depends on yeah. the, the pattern. Yeah. Like this week, storms, you know, happened. The rest of the week looks quiet, but 48 hours typically. With good confidence, three days. Yeah. And when you mean good confidence, like temperatures? Temperatures, rain yeah. chances sometimes, sometimes not. <laughs> rain chances can be a yeah. little tricky, especially this time of the year. But with good high confidence. If you're asking this because three you're days. looking at our 7 and 10 day, just know that once you get past 3, the changes are kind of replicated in the new data each time. Yeah. And they become fine-tuned as we get right. closer. Right. So, so in- if you're looking at day 8, 9, 10, just consider we're in the 80s. <laughs> like, I, yeah. we used to do that. Yeah. But then I think with the new system, we have numbers in yeah. there. So. Yeah, and yeah, once you get out past day six and seven, it's just sort of a general overall sort of look. Yeah. You know. Other than that, yeah. t- and if you're looking at rain chances on days eight, nine, ten, those are, those are there. Yeah. Those are a crapshoot. Yeah, they are. And, you know, we're n- I'm not going to forecast above 40% seven days out. I'm just no. not. No. It's going to yeah. change. Yeah, it's going to change and get different. 
And we I know have, people are going to look at that day and like, oh, we got a party. You right, know how yeah, that is. Yeah. 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 Mm, no. <laughs> one more? Yeah. Let's do one more and then we'll save uh, save the rest for next episode. Ah, going to end on a fun note. Uh-oh. Any inspirations for the backyard or outdoor space for either of you this year? Mm, I've been thinking about that. I don't know. I like to go around walks in neighborhoods and look. Mm-hmm. I don't know, especially with, like, Brooks. Mm-hmm. He's at the age where he wants to get into everything. Mm-hmm. So, like, I would love a water feature, but then it's like we have a kid walking around. Probably right. not. Um, so we have a fountain out back. But I think at this point, just figuring out what I want his play area to look like, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, because he's getting to that age. He's, he's getting the age where big, he's going to need yeah. something outside. And yeah. how do you do that? But also don't take away your backyard. Right. We did remove a lot of our ivy in the front of our house. Yeah. So it's not backyard inspiration, but it's outdoor inspiration. Yeah. We're going to lay more mulch down in the front. Yep. And uh, I sent you a picture of my monkey mm-hmm. grass. Looking good. It looks real good. So. Um, my inspiration this year uh, is less is more. <laughs> I feel that. I I'm, feel that. I'm scaling back a bit. I'm good. I'm scaling back a bit. It's a lot Just, of work. It's a lot of work. <sighs> I'm tired. <laughs> no, I get <laughs> I'm it. T- I get it. I may do a couple of veggies this year. Last year, I went all out with my vegetables. I may do a couple of cucumbers and some jalapenos. Um, I have a little front and side sort of courtyard in my house. Always struggled with it, getting grass to grow, and what am I going to do here? So in my less is more endeavors this year, it's now AstroTurf, and I don't have to do anything. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> I had ast- had uh, turf put down. That's nice. No watering, no fertilizing, blow it off, call it a day. Yeah. I'll put a couple of potted plants out there and call it a garden. Yeah. And that's it. My backyard's pretty self sustaining. Yeah. Every, everything's perennials and just it just kinda does its thing. That's kinda what our backyard is. Yeah. The grass isn't great in the backyard, but yeah. I d I don't want to put anything down either. That's where Brooks plays. Yeah. So it's like yeah. it's green, it's there. Yeah. Um I've gotten into the I used to spend one day outside just doing everything. Mm-hmm. But it's so much now mm-hmm. that it's like, okay, I'm gonna spend yeah. today in the back. Yeah tomorrow in the front like i'll break right. it up now over the course of two days right. especially with the heat coming oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> forget yeah. that more yeah. than 30 minutes and i'm done yeah so but yeah i don't really have anything i like your uh astroturf though it's, i don't know it's where amazing I would put that. it looks so good and it's it's wonderful it's wonderful i'm hooked mm. yeah i would have to level a lot out to do that yeah mm. it was good it was good yeah End of episode 46. 46. Next episode, we'll uh, really deep dive into the I'm hurricane so stuff. I'm so excited. Uh, really deep dive into it. I'm going to have to get in my phone. I was, as, as all the presentations were going on, I was taking pictures. I was like, okay, need to talk about this. Need to talk about this. Oh, need fun. to talk about this. That's fun. So, yeah, we'll have a lot. Well, enjoy the weekend. It's going to yeah, be beautiful. It is going to be really nice. Um, if you're listening to this later on, maybe you're binging. Thanks for catching up with us. Yeah. And does it for 46. 50 is coming 50 soon. 50 is coming up. I don't have any plans. We're going to figure that out. Yeah, we've already done a year. We already did a cake. Mm. Eh, just another episode. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll figure it out. We'll see you all. Thanks for Thanks tuning y'all. in.